I think there's 60 million Bitcoiners in our mm-hmm. country, and they've been able, they're very energetic. Mm-hmm. And they've been able to talk to their legislature. So now a majority of people in Congress and the Senate want to see Bitcoin transactional. Um, they want to see it non-taxable. They want to um, encourage it. They want to end the war. And the Biden administration, either knowingly or through inertia, has been locked in a war with Bitcoin. If we want to continue with having the the world's global reserve currency, the world's global preferred trade currency, the world's safe haven currency, we need to move quickly to integrate Bitcoin into our um, into our our reserves. You recently mentioned Bitcoin being honest currency or honest money, and. We can't say the same thing about the U.S. dollar or any other fiat currency. You know, the Fed should has a dual mandate of you know supporting the economy and also supporting price stability. Well, they kind of gaslit all of us in 2021 when they said there's no inflation. Well, it was the biggest inflation spike in 40 years. So, what role do you think Bitcoin can play with respect to the Fed and making the Fed's job better and making them more honest about what they do? I think we need to to link at least some of our treasury bills and some of our our notes to to hard currency, and that would include Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin is the most efficient because it is the perfect money. It's transactional across the globe. It will, I mean, if you imagine what it will do if we link the dollar to it, it will guarantee the future of the dollar as permanent reserve currency in the globe because everybody wants dollars. If you tie it to the, to, uh, the dollar, it injects discipline into the, the Fed. We gotta do other things to fix the Fed too. Yeah. But it makes it so they can't just, you know, engage in this orgy of money printing with no consequence and no tie to reality. If we are the first movers on Bitcoin and we get 4 million Bitcoins, it will cost us around $750 billion to do that. But within a few years, that's going to be worth $100 trillion. And that money will generate wealth every year, enough to neutralize our budget deficits. That's how you get rid of this, you know, extraordinary, this existential debt. So it's an elegant solution for almost everything. Do you think a lot of the damage has already been done? We see a lot of companies that have moved overseas and that are not looking at the U.S. with the same uh, optimism that they once did. Um, how big is that threat that we lose blockchain innovation, Bitcoin innovation going overseas? And, and, and ha- I think we can get it back yeah. if we change policies. People would rather be in this country. Um, you know, people would rather be here mainly than, you know, Switzerland or Dubai or Singapore. And, you know, there's a lot of still trust in the U.S. government, and I think this will make the government more trustworthy, and, and it will encourage people to want to move wealth and business here. It seems like Bitcoin really aligns with the values, with American values of freedom and democracy. Can you just kind of walk me through how you kind of stumbled on Bitcoin and how you became such an ardent Bitcoin supporter? I heard about Bitcoin from my kids. I've got seven kids and they were a bunch of them were kind of college age and interested in, you know, in finance and they're very entrepreneurial. And, and so they had gotten in small ways into Bitcoin very early. But for me, it was kind of just a novelty and I didn't understand much about it. And then I was involved, I, I was involved in the trucker strike in Canada. And during that period, I saw what happened, which is that this is a very peaceful protest, people exercising freedoms that we take for granted in this country. Yet the Canadian government portrayed it publicly as kind of a terrorist Mm -hmm. event. And they began using technologies like facial recognition systems to identify people who are participating and then freezing their bank accounts. They froze a $12 million PayPal account. And at that point, I was in shock. I, because none of these people have been charged with a crime, none of them been, of course, convicted. And uh, I realized that time that transactional freedom was as important as uh, freedom of expression that is protected by the First Amendment. If we didn't figure out a mechanism for guaranteeing transactional freedom, that we were added to a really dystopian world where the government could turn us into slaves. Bitcoin is, uh, became, for me, the this, this, this extraordinarily elegant solution to so many of our problems. So it became an off-ramp for inflation, and a hedge against inflation, an off-ramp from the, these existential deficits we're now suffering. It's a way to challenge the war machine because you, the war machine is dependent just on printing money, you know, without even asking permission. 
it's a guarantee of personal freedoms, of self-responsibility, of self-sovereignty.